Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, we've been talking about God positioning us to bless us. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for our daily bread, just like the Lord has commanded us to do? Join me right now, wherever you are, and declare, say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now. Angels, you will bring this to me as God has commanded. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. And Father, we honor you for today's broadcast. Thank you. I declare right now, burdens are being lifted. Yokes are being destroyed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for you will guide us into all truth, Lord. Even as Jesus said, your work in us is to guide us into all truth. You will not allow any one of us to walk in a lie. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we, when we talk about positioning, you see, when God says, this is what I'm going to do, it's it's important that you take time out and begin to meditate on it and see what meditation does is it brings out different aspects and if you're a studious person if you study the bible very well if you listen to the spirit of god very well in your place of meditation things will begin to come up that the lord had said to you previously you see, because there is nothing God is going to do in your life today that is not connected with what he has said to you before. So if you don't know how to connect, if you don't know how to keep history, then you will have a life that's kind of haphazard. You will know where you're going. You will know where you are. You will know where you've been. So this is what meditation does. When you take time out to meditate on God's word, meditate on have fellowship with the holy spirit in prayer now the reason we pray is not just because we want to command fire the most important reason we pray is that we align our minds with god because the truth is this anything god is doing in your life or anything god is doing with you if you're a child of god The ultimate goal of God is that he will find himself in you. Every work God is doing in your life, every work God is doing through you, his ultimate goal is that he will look at you and you will reflect. That's why God loved David so much. He said, this is a man that is after my heart. What that meant was this. This is a man that always want to know what I'm thinking. That was the character, or that was the, the, the quality of David that endeared him to God. He always wanted to know the mind of God so that he would fall in line with it, not just knowing it for knowing sake. You know, sometimes, especially as, as preachers, you, you want to know something so that you can teach it. But this is beyond teaching. This is for living. Praise God. So the David would always want to know the mind of God. So he he would it would influence his decisions. This is why we pray. This is why we fast. To know what God is thinking concerning this situation. So that we can fall in line. Now you know the Bible says that it's a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the Lord. Now, when you when you read scriptures like that or you hear statements like that, it's easy for you to start thinking, hmm, you know, negative. They like to fall into the hands of the Lord. Mean, I mean, means to do wrong things and, and let the Lord now punish you. Like if you enter my trap, you know this kind of how we talk like that. Now, but you see, most importantly, what does it mean to fall into the hands of the Lord? It simply means to be in that place. Now, I want you to get me. It simply means to be in that place where you are 
controlled fully by God. It doesn't necessarily mean to do something wrong and God comes with a cane after you. It, it means to be in that place where you operate and, and, and dwell in God. So that's a, why did he say it's a fearful thing? I'll tell you why. It's an amazing place to be in, but it's also a fearful place to be in. Amazing because you know you're in the center of God's purpose and God's will for your life and his program. Scary because only him will dictate how your life will go. Now that's the part you don't you will not like. That's the part you will wish was not part of the package. Because at that time, you cannot dictate, you cannot say, in two years' time, this is what I'm going to be, until you have heard from the Lord. You cannot say, this is what I'm going to get, until you have heard from the Lord. So, I'll give you an example. The children of Israel, they, before, before they were even born, before, this is Abraham now, Abraham was having fellowship with the Lord. And he was asking God for some sign about inheriting the land that God had spoken to him. And guess the sign God gave to him? The Lord says, your children are going to be in a foreign land. Now, let me read that. That's in the book of Genesis. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Genesis. chapter 15 verse 13 this is genesis 15 and verse 13 and he said this god talking to abraham and he said unto abraham know for a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them for hundred years notes this god says they shall serve them and they shall afflict them for 100 years and also that nation whom they shall serve will i judge and afterwards they shall come out with great substance and god gave the reason for this now, now i want you to get this now a man was fellowshipping with God and God said, Hey, Abraham, you know what? Your seed is going to be in a foreign land and they will serve, telling you the nature of the occupation or the nature, nature of them being in that land. It says they will serve. Not only will they serve, they also will be afflicted. And he gave the timing for it, 400 years of affliction. Now, you know, sometimes people go, oh, they stayed more than 400 years because of Moses. No, notice God says they will be afflicted 400 years. And then also God says, after 400 years, I will bring them. I didn't say on the 400th year, I will bring them. He said, after 400 years, I will bring them out. Now, why 400? Why not 50? <laughs> why not 20? Why 400? Now, God was speaking to Abraham here. That's who became Abraham. Isaac was not born yet. Jacob was not born yet. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, Jacob was born. And you know the whole story. He had his own children, and Joseph was sold into Egypt. And eventually, Jacob, who became Israel, moved to Egypt. Now, they didn't move into Egypt as slaves. They moved into Egypt as kings. You understand what I'm saying? And Joseph gave them a place to stay. At that time, 
they did that move out of necessity. And, and this is how prophecies are fulfilled. You don't, you don't plan to fulfill prophecy. Prophecy, every prophecy God has truly given is self-fulfilling. You don't, and, and I want you to understand this, you don't struggle to fulfill prophecy. You only align yourself and you will realize that prophecy is being fulfilled. So, time and chance happen, and that's how prophecies are fulfilled, time and chance will happen. They got into Egypt, and eventually a pharaoh that did not know Joseph arose and turned that their friendly treaty into something else and made them a servant. Now, how long did God say they are going to be there? 400 years. I want you to think about it. A, a, a child that was born the day they got into Egypt lives up to 100 years. And let's say on that 100th year, he gives back to another child. Now, they have lived the 100 already. That child he gave back to in his 100th year will live 100 years. That's 200 now. And if he gives back to another child, and whatever children here, just follow my analogy. If he gives back to another child, so four generations living up to 100 years, then 400 years is complete. And God says, after that, I will bring them out. Now, what does this tell you? Any prayer of deliverance you pray after 100 years, it will not work. Any cry you cry, it will not work. Anything you do in terms of delivering yourself, it will not work. Until the time is accomplished. Now, who set the time? Their father, God. Remember, I'm telling you, I'm trying to explain to you why. He says, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. And then now think about this. He brought them out of Egypt. I mean, with Moses, of course. And the journey to the promised land was 40 days journey. And they knew the way to the promised land. Because they, 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 it wasn't a strange place to them. They had moved from there. You understand what I'm saying? So there was a pathway. There was a road to the, to the land of Canaan. But then when God brought them out of Egypt, he didn't let them take the road they knew. He didn't let them find the way themselves. He sent an angel to guide them. And guess what? This angel wasn't guiding them in the way that they knew already. This angel began to guide them into paths that they have never walked before. So he led them to the Red Sea, parted the Red Sea, led them into the wilderness, led them to different nations, and eventually they spent 40 years before getting to their destiny. Now, all these things God orchestrated. So you ask yourself, why didn't, why did they, I mean, God was delivering them from 400 plus years of slavery. And now he's delivering them from there, taking them to a land that they already, now when I mean they already knew, they had been to before, I mean, their fathers had lived in before. And God didn't just tell them, that's the way, go there and overtake and, and possess your land. No, he led them and he led them through a different route. And they had to follow, even if they had a sense of the road that, or to the place where they ought to be. They had to follow carefully the Lord. And those who did not follow carefully lost their lives in that wilderness. Yet God brought them out so that they would go in to the promised land. You see why he says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Now, we're going to continue tomorrow because our time is up. But I want you to follow us because there's something I want to open up to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for you today 
that the Spirit of God will guide you by Himself. The Spirit of God will keep the way and you will obey His voice and see His manifestations. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.